And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Happy Halloween, also known as All Hallows' Eve and the Day of the Dead, which is All Souls' Day, which is uh, November the 2nd. Okay, All Saints' Day is, of course, November the 1st, my grandfather's birthday. And uh, something happened here. Wait, hold on. No, nothing happened. Uh, nothing. That was my fault. Uh huh. That was my fault. Owning up to it. That was my fault. All Hallows Eve. It is All Hallows Eve. It happens to be Saturday afternoon. All Hallows Eve. 2015. My favorite holiday of the year, my favorite time of the year, October. October 31st, Saturday afternoon, All Hallows' Eve. Happy Halloween, 2015. Okay. And, and away we go. Oh. Ah! Greetings, everyone. Um... Yes, it's me. I I did not bring the black thorn shillelagh because I will what? be no because I I have I I have too much to deal with with who I am for All Hallows Eve 2015 and uh, who I am yeah who the hell are you well to to the average person. Mm -hmm. I look uh, demonic, right? Ah! I look, look like a demon. Some people might even say... Mr. Scratch. Mrs. Chicken Scratch? No, not Chicken Scratch. Mr. Scratch. Some people might say Satan. Some ah! people might say uh, Beelzebub. Or Beelzebub? You, you, like you say, Beezel. 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 Now, that sounds too much like Weasel. But uh, well, what he is a weasel. What I am, well, he's uh, well, be, uh, he's also a the liar. Great, the greatest liar. That's correct. So the there, is. so therefore, father of the lie. That's true. So yeah. therefore, this Halloween, uh -huh. 2015, <coughs> I am a Republican. Oh my God! This is what a Republican, what a conservative, really looks like when you unmask. His facade. Yes, they're demons, especially the right-wing corporate American CEO. This is what they all look like. Mm. So I will be putting this on occasionally. Right now, it's a little warm. Yeah, a little from, warm. A little it. warm yeah. for my face. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I will keep the hat on. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. There you go. Uh, well, oh, a I, st I still look like a wise acre. I I didn't have yeah, wise I didn't have black and red stripes like Freddy Krueger. So this is the closest thing. Well, that looks like a prisoner. You know the <laughs> French French prisoner. Well, the, the French fisherman is like that. With that shirt, no. That's not a fisherman. No, no, I have I have an actual French fisherman shirt. It's okay. it's red and white stripes horizontally. Okay. But that's what I am. I am what I am. It's all that I am. I'm a Republican. This is what you people really are. I mean I mean, you know. Uh now uh speaking of Good. the Republicans are are pissed off at uh um CNBC's uh, chairman for not being fair with them for asking really? asking them uh, gotcha questions. What kind of questions? Gotcha, gotcha questions. They man. they felt that that nasty they, as Trump. They said. they felt that their questions were quite valid and challenging uh -huh. and uh, you know, you know a, a part of being a good journalist and and the Republicans were were whining and crying that the questions were tough. 
Well, yes. well then the answer, you know, because uh, when you're uh, when you're running for president mm -hmm. and and uh, in the campaign mode and stuff like that, you're not interested in answering honest questions. You have you have an agenda. You have talking points, and that's where you want to stick. So you don't want to be answering off the cuff or things of that nature. Okay? Right. Yeah. I'm waiting for the medicine to kick in. So that's why they're up. Uh, yeah, they're all upset, and uh, <coughs> you know, um, they they usually. When they don't get their way, they they're known for Wah, take, yeah, they whine and they cry. They take tantrums. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what's amazing? Uh, how uh, how Chris Christie and Carly Fiorina said, "Oh, if they ever if they ever get to debate um, Hillary, Hillary Clinton, they're going to destroy her." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think their um, their record was that great. To be able to debate, Carly is the big liar. Carly Fiorina made it sound like she was godsend to Hewlett Packard. She was a gift from God, and, and she went from secretary to CEO. What a life that is! What about the the numbers she mentioned about how how she changed things around and, and made everything skyrocket for Hewlett Packard? Oh yeah, yeah. And then mentioned about and sold to to Iran. Huh? Then mentioned Whilst about there was a embargo. Then she mentioned about a working women, or she has so much. Oh, yeah. She has so much compassion for the mainstream working woman. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. Well, the you know she's the best thing that ever happened for Hewlett Packard, and uh, That's uh, why they kicked her out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and. Um, Believe me, if they were doing well, they wouldn't kick her out. They'd put up with anything. They weren't doing well, they'd kick her out. Yeah, and then uh, um, uh, 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 Ben Carson, who... Ben Carson, in my opinion, he, is on Valium. Ben Carson, he, uh, he looked like he was drugged up for the debate. Exactly. He was a little too calm, cool, and collected. And he also, uh, like... Um, like Rand Paul, he also muttered something about uh, that, you know, social programs, subsidies take away your liberty, your freedom, they are taking away Americans' freedom. Yeah. Uh, they're holding you back. When, when guess the, what? When the government helps you, they're holding your back. And and Ben Carson says you, you should have the, the freedom, the liberty to rise and fall. So when you fall, and you're not a success, and you don't make it. Starve. What do you do? Starve. You starve to death. Yep. And if you get sick, according to Rand Paul and Ben Carson, you and Ra Rand Paul's father, Ron Paul. Yeah, and you don't get, you don't get to see the doctor. No. You don't get medical care. No. So, Die in the street, baby. So you uh, under 100% capitalism. You have the uh, the liberty, the freedom to shop, uh -huh. and if you don't have any money, you have the freedom to die. Thank you. Be before your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Ben Carson, of course, used used those things that he's bitching against now today. See, subsidies. Subsidies and etc. You, you know. be talking about affirmative action. Stuff like that. He took advantage of it. Took advantage of it, yeah. It's okay for him. It's okay for him. Yeah. But it's, not, not, but it's not good for anyone else. No, because no, he no, has, no. I have mine. I mean, he has his. That's right. And he can care less. That's correct. Who, who what any. Typical Republican. Yeah. I, I mean, the haves can care less about That's the have nots. Yeah. It's just, you know. We got ours. <laughs> then he, he denied affiliation with that organization. Yeah, for 10 years. Boy, how the hell can you deny you're working for these guys for 10 years? So it was a cornucopia of lies. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the debate was called, I don't know, it was called Many Negative Things. It, like, it sounded like a three-ring circus or, a, or it was a disaster. I mean... And it was supposed to be on the economy. Journalists use all kinds of negative words about the Republican debate. Huh? It was supposed to be on the economy. 
and all of their tax plans, according to fact check, are lies. Will not work and will cause a bigger deficit. Oh, you mean the flat tax? No, all of their tax plans. They well, have several different it's, ones. It sounded like I didn't hear the, the fine details or any details about Donald Trump's tax plan. That, There's two. Uh, Same but, thing. but most of them were spouting some form of uh, uh, flat tax and or consumption tax. Mostly flat tax, which which is what Steve Forbes used to talk about all the time. Yeah. 10%. Yeah, uh, 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 10 to 15. Uh, Mr. Valium is, uh, you know, his, his, his is a 10% tithe. Like mean? the Bible. Okay. See, you gave it a nice biblical word, the tithe. But they don't understand the tithe in the Bible. The tithe in the Bible was to do God's work. But doesn't Joe also Not to run the economy. Doesn't t don't TV evangelists use that word tithe also? Oh, I'm sure they do, Mr. Joel Osteen. Tithe for my mansion, tithe for my plane, tithe for my car, my big limousine. You have to tithe for those things, please. So when you, when, 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 when a, um, a false prophet, a TV evangelist, um, takes donated money and, and it spends it on personal things, uh, extravagances, luxuries. No, no, no. They don't do that. He's stealing. He's they stealing. They don't do it for personal things. That would be a crime. The they do it for the church work. Bill, okay. where, where do they get the money for the for the expensive cars and the mansion? From the people. But I'm saying, if they did it for the personal, that's a crime. That is personal when you have a mansion and an expensive car. Well, yeah, but it comes under the business doing it the church is doing all right it. so they're so they're they're so using they're yes. using church money yes which is tax exempt yes which that's got to go yes for personal use well so they're embezzling church money for personal extravagances and they're calling it uh, 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 give a, a tithe, give a tithe to yeah. my ministry so the ministry it's like uh, it's a business. It's a business. That's correct. Like set up like a corporation. Well, they are corporations. Yes, absolutely. That's why they have a tax exempt. Right. You have to have a five hundred one three C or whatever the hell it is to get a tax exempt. Okay. So you are a corporation. Even though you don't know a damn thing about what's inside the Bible. Correct. You call but yourself, who cares? You call yourself a a reverend or a pastor mm -hmm. or a, yeah. you know like I I mean I never I've never heard uh, um, the Reverend Al Sharpton give a sermon with biblical verses references or, yeah. or you know even Jesse Jackson but I don't know I've never heard his sermon so I don't know but as far as TV evangelists go. I don't hear them quoting the Bible much at all, except when they cherry pick certain things. Uh huh. You know, uh, and then they turn it around. Like, uh, for instance, the uh, the uh, 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 parable of the talents. They think the talents, even though the talents were money, but the parable about the talents was not about money. It was about doing God's work. I thought a talon was the claws of, of, a, of a raptor, a, a bird of prey. No, it was, it's, it was money at one time. Oh. You know, talon. Talons. Uh, the, the, and the parable has the guy, the owner of the, the owner of the land or etc. go away for a while and he gives one uh, of his workers uh, ten talents, the other five, the other one. And a guy with ten, he puts it to use and he gets twenty. And when the owner, owner comes back, he says, I, I put your money to work, and you've he, got 20 talents now. The other guy with five did the same thing, gave him 10 talents. The guy with one said, you know, I know that you're very strict, and you're a very uh, aug, uh, 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 austere man, so I put your talent away, okay? Because right. I was afraid of losing it, etc. So when he came back, he didn't have anything but the one talent. And then that guy was out because he was supposed it, it, it was supposed to increase. 
see, but the parable had nothing to do with the talents, money. It had to do with doing God's work because it was it was the the parable itself was about Jesus going away to heaven. And then you work and for him, and then he comes back and sees the work you did, and he rewards you. Oh, well, maybe that's and nothing what... to do with money. Now, even Garner Ted Armstrong made that mistake, and his father corrected him. It was so with Garner Ted. It was about the money, doing works for self, for money, himself. Yeah. We had to do money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they they use it as a front. That's correct. As an excuse. Yeah, they well, they use it as a, as as poor people not not uh, being moochers instead of you know. Yeah. Uh, working for themselves well, you're, and doing you're, their, their job to get rid of Your evangelical born-again people, they they uh, they use uh, salvation, uh, the, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus uh, Christ, as an excuse to go and, uh, become, you know, to continue being a jerk and, and an asshole and a selfish bastard. And they say, and their excuse is, well, you know, uh, I repented and I'm I'm saved. I'm yeah. saved, so you know uh, yeah. my sins are uh, are always going to be saved. So they continue yeah. li living, I guess, in the flesh in in the worldly sense. Yeah. Because if you're if you sin and you and you abuse people and you steal and you lie and all that, you're not you you're not living the godly life. Uh -huh. You know, so like uh, somebody we know. But, but they uh, think they can be forgiven 892 times, like Mr. Swagger. Or even worse, 892 million times if they're a real that bastard. That too, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they can continue <laughs> being an asshole. That's correct. And but they're covered by the blood. Yeah. They're using that as as an, uh, another front. Everything we talk about politically is part of our series. Capitalism in a conch shell. Okay, there's the conch. My messages from the great beyond on, on All Hallows Eve 2015 and uh, let me get this over with because we're going to change the format a little bit for next time but anyway everything you've heard out there about trickle down economics from the Reagan days was a lie what you have is siphon up to the top 20% the devil's economics. Uh -huh. Capitalism is the devil's economics, but uh, apparently, uh, oh, you know what I heard? This is a siphon, by the way. I heard that the Republicans recently blocked a bill to allow uh, students to refinance their student loans. Yeah. I, I assume for lower interest. Yeah. So the Republicans don't want you to pay your student loan back with lower Interest. Well, they certainly don't want you to be going to school for free either. Uh, well, they want they want you like they, like ten other countries in the world, you know, the, the industrial they, countries. They, they want you with their capitalism. They want you to pay out of pocket for every damn thing. That's correct. Um, um, which is insane. Uh, now, when Chris Christie says, "Hold on to your wallets." So, you know, if, uh, when Bernie Sanders talks about all this free stuff here uh -huh. and free stuff there, hold on to your wallets because they're going to come after you and make you pay for it. Uh -huh. Guess what? Guess what he really means? The rich are going to pay That's for correct. it, That's not correct. not the main, the poor or the mainstream uh, should hold on to their wallets. But you, do you you're, know, you're damn right. The rich are going to pay for it. But uh, you know that is not uh, that should not even be an issue because the fact of the matter is when you redirect the money that is wasted on the military and etc. That never came up. You don't have to have huge tax increases. <laughs> Did you hear the? You do have to have some way, my friend. Of making these people who have had a tax holiday for 30 to 35 years or more to pay their fair share. Did, did you hear the big lie? It's so simple. Did you hear another big lie during the debate that uh, social programs make up like like 75% of, of the budget? Of the budget? Yeah. Uh -huh. No. 
Not one word was mentioned about military spending. That that's that makes up fifty seven percent. Fifty seven percent. And and social services make up one to two percent. One percent, yeah. The only thing they said that that I liked was the fact that and I'm surprised Mike Huckabee stuck to it about Social Security. It, it, it is not, you know, yours to take. It's paid for by the people. Social Security. Let's get this straight. Understand this. It's has not an entitlement at has all. has nothing to do with the deficit. Social Security is a separate system which you and your boss pay into. Uh huh. Okay, now, what happened early in this country after Reagan, etc.? The Social Security system was usually held in a separate fund. Right. The government uh -huh. took the money right. and gave the Social Security system treasury bonds. Right. Okay, so the Social Security system today is invested in $2.7 trillion in the, the, the best investment in the world, United States Treasury bonds. United States Treasury, right. Now, this is what they all the time say, even George Bush and et cetera. Well, it's only a bunch of IOUs in a file cabinet. Well, I got news for you, but, pal. But they're legal IOUs. United States Treasury bonds, as I said, are the best investment in the world. Ain't no freaking IOUs. So, so you pay up. So he could say. To, so what does that mean? He can say the same thing about uh, a, 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 a a bank vault loaded with other people's stocks and bonds that they're just pieces of paper. Yeah, absolutely. That we can steal absolutely. anytime we but want. But the point is, again. Social Security has nothing to do with the deficit. No, none. Nothing. So you don't need to cut it or do anything else. In fact, you should enhance it. You know, people, let's say people get, a lot of people on Social Security are only getting like $1,200 a, a month. That should be doubled. Now. Immediately. Right. Doubled. Because it hasn't grown, and you see what they're doing this year with the cola, we're not getting any, because gas is low. But what about hamburger? What about other foodstuffs? And they say, oh, well, they're off the bat. We don't have that in the basket. We don't have food, and we don't have oil in the basket. How convenient. Well, these two things are, are, are the ones that go up the, the, the quickest, don't they? Put them in a freaking basket. They're not in the basket because they deliberately deliberately left, left it out of the basket. That's correct. Because they don't want to help the poor. They don't want to help the lower middle class. They don't want to help anybody. And and ran was it well, Rand Paul? Basically, it's they don't want to. They don't. They don't want the government to be spending money was, on. Was it things. the scumbag Rand Paul that kept on saying, "I want to shrink government so no, small"? No, 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 no. That was so small. That, was, that you can drown it in a bathtub. No, he. he I think it was him that no, said. No, uh, no, no. It was Hoochie Goo. I want to shrink. His name it. escapes me now, but he's been saying it for years. I want to shrink it. So, well, they they all took turns about big government is the is the enemy. Big government is to blame for everything. They but nothing. they keep making it bigger. <laughs> you know, it's it's this thing. Let, let let's just look at the, the guns for a moment. The guns. Oh, we're afraid that the the government is going to take away our guns. We tyranny. Tyranny! We need our guns! Our guns! Well, my friends, your government, that is the people who have the purse, the moolah, is the house. And who owns the house? Republic. The demons. The demons. So what are you afraid of? The demons coming after your guns? That ain't gonna happen. Obama never t touched their guns. You know? But that's the government today is the house. They own the purse. 
You don't get nothing done unless the house votes to do it with the moolah. Yeah, and they kept on they kept on blaming our our national debt. It sounded like they were blaming uh, national or deficit. The deficit. I'm sorry. The national the deficit on Obama. They, were, they said nothing about the Bush and Cheney administration. Yeah. They said nothing about the Iraq and Afghanistan wars for profit. Well, they never did. They said nothing about military spending. It, everything was Obama's fault during that debate. When Obama went into office, and I believe government. the deficit was 1.4 trillion dollars. It's down to 400 and some billion dollars right now today. You know, and blaming big government. Uh, uh, well, you know, as I said, but but they, the things. Listen, the things that everybody in the United States take, takes for granted: the poor, the middle class, the rich, and the very rich. They're they they are forms of socialism from social programs. The the things the, the the basic things the basic services that we enjoy that we depend on well, are subsidized are, are but, by the government. But government money giving to somebody is not socialism. No. Okay. The point I'm trying to make but, is... But you can't shrink government down to nothing. You can't shrink it at all if you got House Republicans <laughs> who keep increasing it. Don't you get it? They're, they're, they have the purse. Nothing gets done without the votes of the Republicans. And, and, and so if government has been increasing, whose fault is that? So how can you blame Democrats? Well, they were all in agree in agree uh, in agreement as as far as blaming the size of government and blaming Obama. Nobody really debated one another about that. Correct. And 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 um it was one lie after the other between Carly Fiorina and... The problem is... <coughs> the problem is they have they have grown government, uh, but in the wrong direction. Military. That's correct. Military-industrial complex. That is correct. And Warned uh, against by Mr. Dwight D. Yeah. Eisenhower many moons ago. Yeah, how come, how come subsidies... <coughs> how come subsidies... For corporations and the rich are not hindering their liberty. How come it, when it, when it applies to uh, uh, the little guy, the poor, and the middle the moocher, class? you mean? It's not. It's not. It, it's hindering our freedom. It's